Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of Ether Channel, a technology that allows us to bundle multiple physical links together into a single logical link. Why do we need Ether Channel? Well, imagine you have several fast highways to move traffic between two cities. Combining these highways into one larger multi-lane superhighway would increase the overall capacity and efficiency, right? Ether Channel is a technology that allows us to bundle multiple physical links into a single logical link. The benefits include increased bandwidth, better load distribution, and improved redundancy. It's commonly used in data center environments, where high availability and performance are crucial. For example, imagine a scenario where we have 4 gigabit Ethernet links between two switches. Instead of using them as individual links, we can bundle them into an Ether Channel to create a higher capacity logical link. Ether channel load balancing ensures that traffic is distributed evenly across the bundled links, preventing bottlenecks on individual links. Cisco switches support different load balancing algorithms, such as source destination IP. Traffic is balanced based on the source and destination IP addresses of packets. Source destination MAC. Traffic is balanced based on the source and destination MAC addresses of packets. Source destination port. Traffic is balanced based on the source and destination port numbers in the packet header. In this configuration example, we are dealing with an interface called Port Channel 1. But wait, what is a port channel? Well, a port channel is a logical interface that represents a bundle of multiple physical interfaces, typically Ethernet links. It is also commonly known as a port channel or a port channel interface. Now the next part of the configuration, load balancing method SRCD stip, refers to the load balancing method being applied to the traffic that flows through the port channel interface. Load balancing is a technique used to distribute network traffic evenly across multiple links in a port channel, which helps to achieve better utilization and performance. In this particular configuration, the load balancing method being used is SRC destip. Let's break it down. SRC. This stands for the source address of the traffic, which means that the source IP address of the incoming packets is considered when determining which link in the port channel should be used to forward the packet. DST. This stands for the destination address of the traffic. Similarly, the destination IP address of the incoming packets is taken into account to make load balancing decisions. IP. This indicates that the load balancing is based on the IP addresses, both source and destination, of the packets. So, when traffic enters the port channel interface, the router will use the combination of source and destination IP addresses to decide which physical link within the port channel should carry the traffic. This helps distribute the load across the links and ensures a more efficient utilization of the available bandwidth. Keep in mind that different Cisco devices and iOS versions may support various load balancing methods and SRCDS DIP is just one of several options available. It's essential to choose the appropriate load balancing method based on your network's requirements and the capabilities odd. To verify load balancing, we can check the distribution of traffic across the individual links in the Ether channel. We can also configure different load balancing algorithms to suit our needs, like source destination IP, source destination MAC, or source destination port-based load balancing. To verify the load balancing configuration, we can examine the traffic distribution across the individual links in the Ether channel. Use the following command to display the load balancing algorithm and traffic distribution. To configure load balancing, you can use the load balancing method command, as shown in the previous example. Now, let's talk about the negotiation protocols that establish Ether channels. First, there's PAGP, Port Aggregation Protocol, which is Cisco's proprietary protocol. Then we have LACP, Link Aggregation Control Protocol, a standard protocol supported by various vendors. Lastly, we can create a static Ether channel without using any negotiation protocol. With PAGP, we can set ports to desirable or auto mode. The desirable mode actively tries to form an Ether channel with a compatible partner, while the auto mode waits for the other side to initiate the negotiation. PAGP dynamically manages the Ether channel links. To configure an Ether channel using PAGP, you need to choose one of two modes. Desirable mode. In this mode, the interface actively tries to form an Ether channel with a compatible partner. This command involves the configuration of two Gigabit Ethernet interfaces, namely Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. 
We are going to group these two interfaces together into a port channel interface, also known as an ether channel, using channel group 1. Let's break down the command step by step. 1. Interface range gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. 2. This part of the command sets the range for the interfaces we want to configure. In this case, it includes both gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2. By using the range option, we can configure multiple interfaces simultaneously instead of configuring them individually. 2. Channel group 1. This part of the command specifies that we want to bundle these interfaces together into a port channel. We identify this port channel using the number 1. You could use a different number if you like, but it's essential to ensure consistency across the devices connected to this port channel. 3. Mode desirable. This part of the command sets the port channel negotiation mode to desirable. This mode is used for a type of negotiation called Port Aggregation Protocol, PAGP, which is a Cisco proprietary protocol. The desirable mode means that the interface will actively try to negotiate with other compatible interfaces on the other end of the link to form a port channel. So, when you execute this command, it will combine gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2 into a port channel interface, for example port channel 1, using PAGP with a desirable negotiation mode. The result is that these two gigabit ethernet interfaces will now act as a single logical interface, providing higher bandwidth and link redundancy. It's a way to aggregate the capacity of multiple physical links into a single logical connection, enhancing performance and fault tolerance. Auto mode. In this mode, the interface passively waits for the other side to initiate the ether channel negotiation. In this command, we are configuring two gigabit Ethernet interfaces, specifically gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. Just like before, we're going to group these two interfaces together into a port channel interface or Ether channel using channel group 1. However, this time we're using a slightly different negotiation mode, auto. Let's break it down step by step 1. Interface range gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1, 2. This part of the command sets the range for the interfaces we want to configure, which is gigabyte ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2. 2. Channel group 1. Here, we are designating that these interfaces will be bundled together into a port channel, and we're using the number 1 to identify this port channel. As I mentioned earlier, you can use different numbers, but consistency across devices is essential. 3. Mode auto. This part of the command sets the port channel negotiation mode to auto. Unlike the desirable mode, which we discussed earlier, auto means that the interface will passively wait for the other end of the link to initiate negotiation. In essence, when you execute this command, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2 will be combined into a port channel interface, for example port channel 1, using a negotiation mode called auto. Here's how the negotiation works with auto mode. When the interface comes up, it will send Link Aggregation Control Protocol, LACP or Port Aggregation Protocol, PAGP packets, depending on the configuration of the neighboring device. If the neighboring device is in active or desirable mode and initiates the negotiation, the port channel will be formed. However, if the neighboring device is also in auto mode, neither side initiates the negotiation and the port channel won't form. In such cases, the interfaces will remain as separate standalone interfaces and no port channel will be created. Remember, for this port channel to be established, the configuration on the neighboring device must match in terms of channel group number and the negotiation mode, auto in this case. LACP also offers active and passive modes, similar to PGP's desirable and auto. LACP actively sends LACP packets to form a channel and the passive side responds to those packets. LACP is the industry standard protocol for Ether Channel, ensuring interoperability between different vendors. Active mode, the interface actively sends LACP packets to form a channel with a compatible partner. This command configures two gigabit Ethernet interfaces, specifically gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. We will group these two interfaces together into a port channel or Ether Channel interface using channel group 1. The negotiation mode we are using here is active. Here's the breakdown. 1. Interface range gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. 2. 
This sets the range of interfaces we want to configure, which includes Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. 2. Channel Group 1. This designates that these interfaces will be bundled together into a port channel interface, and we're using the number 1 to identify this port channel. 3. Mode Active. This sets the port channel negotiation mode to Active. In this mode, the interface actively sends Link Aggregation Control Protocol, LACP, packets to initiate negotiation with the other end of the link. When you execute this command, Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2 will be combined into a port channel interface, for example port channel 1, using the active negotiation mode. With active mode, the interface will actively try to form a port channel with a compatible neighboring device that supports LACP. If the neighboring device is also in an active or passive mode, which is a similar LACP mode, the port channel will be formed, providing higher bandwidth and link redundancy. Passive mode, the interface responds to LACP packets, but doesn't initiate the negotiation. This command configures two Gigabit Ethernet interfaces, specifically Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. Both interfaces will be grouped together into a port channel or Ether channel interface using channel group 1. The negotiation mode we are using here is passive. Here's the breakdown. 1. Interface range Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 2. This sets the range of interfaces we want to configure, which includes Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. 2. Channel Group 1. This designates that these interfaces will be bundled together into a port channel interface, and we're using the number 1 to identify this port channel. 3. Mode On. This sets the port channel negotiation mode to On. In this mode, the interface will not send any negotiation packets, neither LACP nor PGP, to form a port channel. When you execute this command, Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2 will be combined into a port channel interface, for example, port channel 1, using the ON negotiation mode. With ON mode, the port channel will be forced to be up and operational without any dynamic negotiation. This means the interfaces will be combined into the port channel without requiring any LACP or PGP negotiation with the neighboring device you have the power to choose which negotiation protocol to use. Depending on the device's capabilities, you can manually set PGP or LACP on both sides of the Ether channel to ensure compatibility. For Ether channel to work smoothly, all participating links must match in terms of speed, duplex settings, and VLAN configurations. Consistency across all links ensures proper data transmission and avoids potential conflicts. To check the status of our Ether channel interfaces and see if they are correctly bundled, we can use the Show Ether Channel Summary command. It provides valuable information about the channel's state, members, and traffic distribution. Additionally, we can use the Show Ether Channel Port Channel command to get detailed statistics about the performance of the port channel interface itself. Also known as Routed Ether Channel, or Routed Port Channel, provides the capability to create a logical interface at the network layer, Layer 3, that bundles multiple physical links and operates as a single logical link. Unlike Layer 2 Ether channels that carry VLAN-tagged traffic, Layer 3 Ether channels are associated with IP addresses and can be used for routing purposes. Benefits of Layer 3 Ether channel 1. Load balancing at the network layer Layer 3 Ether channel allows for traffic load balancing based on IP addresses, providing more granular control and efficiency in distributing traffic across the member links. 2. Logical interface with IP address. A Layer 3 Ether channel is assigned an IP address, making it a virtual interface that can be used as a gateway or routed interface in IP routing scenarios. 3. Redundancy and fault tolerance, like Layer 2. Ether channel Layer 3 Ether channel also provides link redundancy and fault tolerance, ensuring uninterrupted connectivity even if some links fail. 4. Increased bandwidth for routing. By aggregating multiple links into a single logical link, Layer 3 Ether channel enhances overall bandwidth available for routing traffic. Suppose we have two physical interfaces, Gigabyte Ethernet 0 slash 1 and Gigabyte Ethernet 0 slash 2, that we want to bundle into a Layer 3 Ether channel with IP address 10.0.0.1 and subnet mask 255.255.255.0. We create the Layer 3 Ether channel interface, 
port channel 1, and assign it the IP address 10.0.0.0.1 with subnet mask 255.255.255.0. The physical interfaces, gigabyte Ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2, are then added to the Ether channel port channel 1 using the PGP negotiation protocol with the desirable mode. Please note that you could also use LACP, Link Aggregation Control Protocol, or create a static Ether channel for Layer 3 Ether channel, similar to the examples provided earlier. After configuring Layer 3 Ether channel, you can use the virtual interface, port channel 1 in this case, in your routing protocols, or as a gateway for hosts in your network. We set the Layer 3 Ether channel port channel 1 as the default route, gateway of last resort, for the router. This means that any traffic without a specific route in the routing table will be forwarded to port channel 1 for further processing. In summary, Layer 3 Ether Channel combines the advantages of link aggregation with routing capabilities, providing increased bandwidth, load balancing, redundancy, and efficient IP routing in modern networks. When appropriately configured, it can significantly enhance network performance and reliability. Ether Channel is a powerful tool that enhances network performance load balances traffic, and provides redundancy. By understanding the various protocols and configurations, you can create efficient and robust Ether channels to optimize your network's performance. We hope this video helped you on your journey towards becoming a cybersecurity expert. Remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest content. And if you found our videos helpful, please give us a thumbs up and share them with your friends and colleagues. Don't forget to check out the links and description for our Anki flashcards and to donate to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Your support can make a real difference in the lives of those in need. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.